It's hard to believe it is April already, but we are back to show you what seeds I'm going to be sowing this month. And let's start off with the weather, because the weather is absolutely crazy around here at the moment. This morning, there's been a scattering of snow that's then been taken away by the rain. Speaking of the rain, it has not stopped raining here for so long. In fact, we've seen record rainfalls in both February and March, which is just a bit nuts. Now, coming into April, you know, yesterday was lovely. Today, we've had snow, we've had rain, and tomorrow, the temperature shoot up to about 15 degrees centigrade, and that's joined by 50 mile an hour winds. So hopefully, I'm hoping once we're a, bit, a little bit further into April, things are just going to settle down a little bit and make it easier for getting some seeds on the go. Anyway, speaking of seeds, let's have a look at what we're going to be sowing this month. Now, there's a few different things. Some of them are successional, some of them are brand new, but let's take a look. So first up, we've got two different types of squash. And the first one here is one called Sunburst. Let me show you that there. And the other one here that we've got, and I'll show you these both at the same time, this is Honey Bear F1. Now you might remember that we've got a bit of a plan for the allotment this year where we're going to grow our squash vertically up over arches. So both of these squash, which I'm going to sow this month, are not, they're not massive squash, not like the big giant pumpkins you can grow. Because if I'm growing up vertically, the weight of those pumpkins is going to be sort of hanging down on that, off, on that arch off those stems. So I need to be able to support the weight as it goes on throughout the season. Next up, we have got some shallots. These ones are called Zebrun, also known as the banana shallot. These are brilliant. Always grow these some seed. I am going to, I must admit, I was, I was looking for the packet over there. That's why I was looking around there. I was in Dobby's the other day and I saw some other shallots, some sets, and I thought, you know what? I'm just going to grab a pack of them and grow some of them. I've stuck a couple of beds, new beds in down at the bottom of the garden there, sort of around the corner. They're going to go in there, but the main cropping sort of shallots, for want of a better term, the Zebrun ones, grown from seed, are going to go in up the allotment and now is just about, should I have had them? Ah, maybe should I had them done last month, but I'm doing them in April. Not to worry, they'll catch up. Things always catch up. If you sow any of these things that I talk about, you know, later than I'm saying, it gets warmer, it gets lighter, they always end up catching up in the end. Next up, a little bit of successional sowing here. Two things, one is lettuce, and this is a variety called Canasta. Now, somebody recommended this variety to me, was it last year or the year before, there before, in the comments, and it is brilliant. I love these, is it Franchi, you pronounce it, the seeds, these seed packets you get, the sort of Italian seeds, brilliant. And this one here, Canasta, is a lovely, lovely lettuce, dead easy to grow, loads of seeds, fabulous. And following on from that, we've got some spring onions. Now, I've done couple of different varieties so far. Ishikura were the ones, the main ones we did earlier in the year. But I discovered this variety here. This is Katana F1. I discovered this by complete chance in the garden centre last year, just walking past, looking at the seeds as you do, and couldn't resist buying some. So I got some Katana F1 spring onions, and they're from, it's Mr. Fothergills. And I've never seen them in any other, any other sort of brands of seeds. I've never seen this variety before, but they are wonderful. What a brilliant seed. They germinate well, they grow well, they grow to a great size, and they've got a brilliant taste. So if you've not tried them, if you want to go and see if you can find them in your local garden centre, or maybe the Mr. Fothergill's website probably has them as well, if it does have a website, but Katana F1 Spring Onion comes highly, highly recommended. Next up, moving into some of the, hopefully, warmer weather. We've got our two different varieties of courgette here. I always do two every year. This one here, which is Easy Pick Gold F1, so that's your sort of yellowy, goldy coloured courgette. And the other one here is just called Zucchini, which is your green coloured courgette. Both pretty much bog standard. I must admit, I don't notice much difference in the taste between the two of them. But again, great croppers, good growers, Absolutely brilliant. It, looks, it just looks nice on the plate of your cooking it in something. Having those different colours, having the green, having the gold, looks absolutely marvellous. Next this month, we're going to be getting some, can some candles, some carrots on the go. And the reason I'm saying candles is because we've got the variety here called Sweet Candle. Now, Sweet Candle are brilliant. I had real difficulty getting Sweet Candle seeds last year. And I didn't even grow them last year because I couldn't get the seeds. But my mum and dad to the rescue, they found me some from Premier Seeds Direct. And we have got sweet candle seeds for this year that I am absolutely chuffed to bits with. 
I think a lot of people use sweet candle as a, as a sort of show variety of carrot, which I don't do. I just grow them for eating, but they grow wonderfully. Big, long, lovely, straight carrots, perfectly formed. They look marvellous when you, you know, it's so satisfying when you see the green top, you know, you put the carrot out the ground and you've got a lovely straight orange carrot and it looks marvellous. Now I do have, admittedly, two other varieties of carrots to grow this year. I think one of them was Touchon and one of them is Black Nebula. But could I find the packets before filming this video? No, I couldn't. So that's my afternoon taken care of, searching around the house, trying to find two packets of carrot seed that I've put somewhere safe for safekeeping at a future date. Next up, again, some of those warmer weather crops and we'll run to the cucumbers. Now, one of the, one of the best things about growing your own produce, growing your own crops, is that you can grow all the different varieties that you don't get in the shops. Now, you can grow different stuff, different varieties each year, different lettuces, squashes, all that sort of stuff. But cucumbers, I'm coming to a little bit of a, an impasse with cucumbers where I'm starting to grow the same two varieties every year. In the last couple of years, I've tried all sorts of different varieties, but the two varieties I am sticking with and doing again this year is this one here, which is Carmen F1. Big, long, lovely, straight cucumber. Again, great cropper. You will get loads of beautiful cucumbers off that. It doesn't have that sort of spiky exterior on the skin as well, so dead easy. Harvest it, clean it, use it. Absolutely marvellous. Great taste. The seeds and cider aren't massive, and they, if you leave them long enough, they will grow huge. Next up, another one of my favourites, and that is Mini Munch. And you might be able to see this packet here. It's a bit bad edit. It's been used for a couple of years, the seeds in it. But Mini Munch is brilliant. What a great cucumber. You will get loads and loads and loads of little sort of what are called lunchbox size cucumbers of one plant. They crop absolutely prolifically from one plant you will get more cucumbers than you will ever need so common f1 mini munch on the cucumbers absolutely highly recommended anyway that is the seeds i am going to be sowing this month let me know what you're going to be sowing down below in the comments but that's me done for today thank you for watching courgette time of year we use a lot of courgettes and let's just show you so you see the the gold